Hello, everyone, and welcome to another day of Valorant Challengers North America. I'm your host, Dryad, and today I'm joined by two weirdos on the desk, and you know what? Whoa, whoa, That's okay. Whoa, whoa, it's been whoa, silly whoa, whoa, and lemon cake. You know, <laughs> le <laughs> lemon. Okay, you a little bit. Vince, Vince is, is the, the weirder one, but it's what? okay. We have. We have a very exciting day today, Vans, because we have the collegiate matchup and then we have the best teams of the groups going against each other, see who's going to be the actual better one. And of course, <laughs> we have you guys as well. So, Vans, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I think you bring up a great topic for today, actually. That's the theme for today. Who's the best out of who? Right? You have two collegiate teams. One wants to prove that they're the best collegiate team. And on the other end, you have two undefeated teams going into stage two. And one of them, unfortunately, has to lose today. But of course, both of them are on the race of and under the conversation of who's the best team currently in challengers so all of that is going to be settled today i i'm excited because <gasps> we got the collegiate classico and whatever your hiccups are going on Sorry. get wins. it together okay <laughs> we got two schools and you know the winner gets to keep their scholarship so there you go their ego but it you know, just get the win, no pressure, no pressure, but just get the win with the collegiate matchup. I feel like this is a matchup that towards the beginning of the year we didn't really see coming, but it ends up going this way. Though, let's talk a little bit about what happened yesterday before yeah. we get into today. Yesterday, we got the chance to see Sad take the win and also Moi Shopify taking the win. For Moi Shopify to start us off, Vans, I feel like this is a match that they really needed to win. It's a team that has looked a little inconsistent, so they needed this convincing win against TSM, which they did. For sure, and especially if, if, you, if I'm in the shoes of players from TS, uh, sorry, from MXS even, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that from myself as as a, uh, like, as a caster saying, oh man, these guys, they lost and they got upset by, you know, a team that they weren't supposed to get upset by. And then you want to come back with a vengeance to be like, ah, you guys are all talking smack. That's exactly what they did yesterday. And uh, it was convincing wins actually against TSM. And for, on my end, it was just unfortunate because I was hoping to see a little, more, a little bit more story coming out of TSM where that story continues, where you have like the continuous up and downs of where TSM is currently heading in the state too but at least overall i think we're we're back into regular scheduled programming for both of these teams mxs continuing to be dominant again and then tsm gonna continue to you know be gatekeepers here and there against other teams and then still be all right going into the playoffs I mean, I don't really, uh, TSM, they're not in the best position. We've, we've heard about the frustration from them and Core as well. Yeah. Core specifically as well, because they haven't really gotten a win this whole time. They talked about on, on social media, how impossible, like pretty much impossible it is for them to make it to playoffs and how frustrated they've been with this, with this performance that they've had. But for Sad, I think it looks great, Lemon. We know this team for being the creative team. They made a couple changes with, to the roster. And I feel like this is the way that you get the wins and, and they had a lot of confidence coming through uh, after winning this. So we're going to see what happens with them. Yeah, SAD is always a fun team to watch, especially when Darkest um, gets to play some deadlock. And that, that series still went the distance, like one of the maps into OT and then 13 to 10 on the second map. So Core have been just so close to that win. But no cigar, but congrats to Sad <laughs> on, on a quicker day then. <laughs> if anything, too, for Sad Esports, it also shows that the, the upset they, that they got uh, against the aforementioned MXS is not a fluke, right? So it kind of looked like, oh, maybe it was an off day for MXS and then Sad got right. the best side of it when, you know, uh, they have Furbsa joining the roster from like two weeks ago. And it went through like the per uh, the permanent sorry, roster of that we're currently seeing now putting Alvin Boy on, on the bench, unfortunately. But then that victory against Sad East, or sorry, against Core yesterday also showed like, okay, well, it wasn't a fluke. We know what we could do. We still have great results going into this ISO jet that we yep. currently have here on the Haven. So look out for us pretty much uh, moving forward <laughs> yeah. uh, onwards in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, that, that's the thing. We didn't know if that win that they got last week was a one-time thing or if they're going to keep it going and they get that win so it looks pretty good the two wins back to back that they're mm -hmm. able to get but now let's get the chance to talk about it today we already spoiled it a little bit for you guys we're going to have that collegiate matchup taking place it's going to be Winthrop University going against Blin and the second match of today is also just a banger Oxygen the team that's undefeated in maps have won seven ma matches in a row to uh, the newer used to be Turtle 2 for those who don't know no, Dark Zero so both of the teams that are undefeated they look really good in the groups and they're gonna go against each other and we don't really know who's gonna come up on top lemon 
Yeah, the, this is going to be a really exciting day because first you got like the narratives of the colleges and then who can keep the streak alive in the second match. So I'm excited to get into it. Uh, yeah, we're going to see. You. Yep, go ahead, Vince. Yeah, sorry. I just want to add a little bit of like uh this is where I'm a little bit sad. Usually, like, I like to be, like, the nice guy and everything, too, going into, like, talking and hyping up all these teams. But, <laughs> unfortunately, now, when I'm looking at this matchup, I'm going to have, I'm going to heavily favor Blinn uh, Esports versus Winthrop because Winthrop are, unfortunately, into, like, this crash and burn type of scenario for this team. Not necessarily since they went through the roster changes of, like, moves retiring and then they're bringing in uh, Screwface uh, and, and they brought in, you know, a little bit more firepower uh, into the, the roster as well. But just overall, it's still hasn't been working out what what they've been trying to achieve since the roster changes since the new look since trying to even cheese their opponents last week so now <laughs> now like you're you've pulled out all stops you tried everything here and nothing is working out uh for you so far this stage so it's it's definitely if you're saying tsm's not looking really good so far it's actually winthrop at this point looking at the standings of stage two what did Winthrop just do? They, they turned Vance into a bad guy. Vance <laughs> a villain, is a big deal. Arc. That's, not, that's not something that anybody can do. But now this, let's dive into this match a little bit more specifically. And let's talk about Blin first. The favorite, honestly, for today. Winthrop used to be that undefeated team for a long time when it came to collegiate matches. At least as of last year. But then Blin, towards the end of the year, came up and started getting win after win after win lemon and it doesn't seem that is gonna ever stop yeah it feels like blin should have been in this season in the, in the first place and they were one win away from qualifying uh to this split but then they had to grind through promotion and relegation and i feel like just going through that tournament kind of painted blin a bit of just at least their reputation of oh well winthrop's always been here they are they are the collegiate team but blin has been the one that has been on top in terms of the head-to-heads they're actually they've won the last three head-to-heads against winthrop uh ranging from third parties to collegiate valorant champions stuff and uh, Winthrop are pretty desperate for revenge. That's it. And just to look at this graphic, just for, for clarification too, the 2010, the 20, those results are actually in favor of Blinn for those last three games that you just mentioned here, uh, or the last three head to heads that you just mentioned here, Jen. So there is a, a good back and forth that's going towards these two teams because as you can see, there's still, you know, some some flash in a pen that comes out from Winthrop in that uh, victory that they got in the CCC finals, which was a big tournament actually for Collegiate uh, that just happened, I think, like November of last year, if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, actually, the, the date's there, so I can't even read dates correctly. <laughs> but nonetheless, yeah. it, it still makes it important that when Blinn, ever since they came out with this different roster uh, into the midseason, into 2024, uh, they've been looking very, very strong in the Collegiate scene. There are the ones mm -hmm. that are really stepping up to the plate outside of like the, I think it was always like Fisher. Northwood and like Winthrop that we were talking yeah. about before and now like the, the Buccaneers, the Blinn Esports out of are really nowhere. Stuck. Exactly. <laughs> Coming out of nowhere and getting victories now. And it looks really good for them. For Blinn, they've been getting these wins in Collegian and they've also been getting some pretty big wins here in, in what is Challenger. So we're going to see if they are able to continue this today. So talking a little bit more specific on Blinn. Uh, they, this is a team that won against M80 a couple weeks ago yeah. and everybody was like, wait, what just happened? Because <laughs> M80 used to be that team that everybody put number one and Blin, it was a team that people didn't really know about. So they were putting them kind of at the bottom mm -hmm. of the table and it's just Blin to come and surprise them. So I think it's Blin that looks amazing for going against Winthrop that also, to be fair, has made some changes when it comes to the compositions, when it comes to uh, who is going to be playing as well. But Blin, with the consistency that they've been able to have and this massive addition of Okeanos, this whole year for them has changed drastically. 100%. And also when you're looking and you just to piggyback on what you're seeing before, you would definitely put M80 as the, the, the victors and the one that's supposed to win that and supposed to win all of Ascension while Blinn just came in through the play-ins at this stage two. So you're playing from uh, premier bracket over to play-ins and then making it now and still beating M80. They like that's unheard of pretty much at that point from that side. But this team overall has been looking really good not only from week to week but i'll take even backwards from map to map from the, that week number one because i remember that i think one of their first matches when they played there was like that whiff clip shot there that came out from from spaz with the glass uh, with the classic over on ascent and i think that was against corey uh in turtle troop back then right but they, they bounced back after that and they're seeing so many good victories coming through and good fights that they're putting up against all of these opponents during stage two so far
Uh, I, I'm liking that we've highlighted the, the win against M80, but like I'm a bit of a recency gal, and they unfortunately <laughs> lost in a map three against Dark Zero and ending on such a low note of a 13 to 3 on Star Icebox. Zero, though. <laughs> They're still a very good team, yeah. but that is kind of a, a low note, like I said, to go mm -hmm. off of a 13 to 3 on Icebox. Uh, so I'm wondering if Blin can kind of get back on that high horse because they were taking good wins. Like you said, not only M80, but sad too. They were on this win streak until that ended. So mm -hmm. I think it'll really come down to the maps to see if Blin can find a comfort zone and to build confidence off of. And as we talked about, Blin are the favorite for this collegiate matchup. But on mm -hmm. the other side, you, you should not underestimate them because Winthrop have also gotten throughout their season some pretty big wins and some unexpected wins. I think recently they've been still trying to find what the vibe is going to be like for this team with the addition of Screwface and Steinlex, who we saw subbing in uh, before for we did for a couple of matches for the midseason cup. So these additions are great in terms of firepower, in terms of what these players have, in terms of experience. Experience, what they're able to add to the team but when it comes to getting these wins that's when things get a little bit more complicated lemon yeah winthrop are in their experimental stage right there's clearly something that that isn't working or they need to find something to reach a new peak a new high score and they are and now with this most recent neon and iso patch they're utilizing both iso and neon where a lot of the teams it's it's one or the other and it didn't look so hot for them in the last match against oxygen uh last week they did okay on their map of bind but then got crushed 13 to 5 on lotus so fans when we were looking at the iso so in neon, like they're they're trying it out, you know. That's it, and that's that's the other thing too. I think Screwface also mentioned it uh, after that. Was like, yeah, we really try to to cheese our way against our opponents and try to get something out of OXG. But we mentioned it, Roy and I, during the Spike Down pre-show yesterday. If you all missed it, now you guys can catch it all on socials. Advertising nights over here. Uh, but <laughs> that that said, it we, what we mentioned was that the the idea was still good. Like the comp on paper still looks really good, but it didn't have a sound plan around it and how they could adapt it into, okay, well, if our cheesiness isn't working, how do we think on the fly and how we could elaborate on that? And that was still missing, right? So that's that's something that probably is needs to be added and needs to be practiced on from not only your IGL, but from a team in general, that in these moments, if you're going in with this with a strict game plan for Winthrop University and it's not working out for your first six or seven rounds, you have to find ways to adapt on the fly. And unfortunately, I haven't, which is why OSG mm -hmm. was able to really take advantage of the Lotus against Winthrop here it's just finding and that that is the process that all of the teams are going through right now finding what works with this new meta and trying to see how they can implement it into their own compositions and their own ideas and also what fits the team when we see okeanos and infiltrator here okeanos was playing a little bit of the jet but also played the neon in one of the maps for infiltrator we saw running with the neon and iso that we already talked about two times instead of winthrop so it just these ideas that are we're still getting the chance to see blind seems like the more traditional team that might add one or two big differences here but for the most part we should still see about the same as we saw last week i feel like lemon so that's what mm -hmm. makes it interesting the the clash of the ideas the clash of the compositions and and seeing if winter we're gonna keep running with this yeah okeanos is such a spark plug to their success and also the entries like on neon he dropped uh, 20 kills and had five first kills in that map of haven against dark zero and that was the map that they took to go to that decider so very much keep an eye on okeanos he was really excited about this patch i mean everyone all the duelists are excited to jump on <laughs> neon and to, to just play lightning fast in a I love that the pace of play is increasing too, and Okiana seems to be really comfortable on this agent. Jen's already ready to become a, a mom because she's already dropping dad jokes. <laughs> uh, yeah, riding oh. the, the, you know, like you said, lightning fast. That's neon right there. That's that's the neon. True. That, that's the neon kit. But overall, uh, joking aside, I, I do think that this is still a patch that is going to favor these two players a lot. We've already seen Infiltrator try to pull that through with Winthrop University, and yeah. Okiano's definitely has the experience to be able to do that and could i mean it brings a lot to the table for even just a team over at blind where if they feel that they don't need to bring that neon out and they could just play with the jet they could still do that as well i think i like this revenge 
arc that Okeanos is, is starting <laughs> to come up with into the challenger scene where, you know, we, we remember this name of when everybody's on that on that uh, race, the rat race of trying to make it into partnerships mm -hmm. back in like 2021. Okeanos was one of that tier two, tier three that was still grinding across to try to get, get known during the ignition series phases in those yeah. tournaments so it's nice that he's able to find a bounce back and actually bring a lot of value into blin uh into blin sorry to uh to do well here in stage two yeah they look really good and it's great to see okeanos back it's, it's great as well to see what is going to happen to dev is going to be the okeanos dominance once again as they've been doing with blin or is going to be something new for winthrop let's jump into the map select like, let's see let's see where we're going to be headed for today with this collegiate matchup is going to be icebox haven and bind lemon what do you make of this i honestly i gotta say every time i get to see haven now i'm just happy <laughs> uh, it's so cool to see that map back in the rotation especially with the patch everyone's uh, experimenting with neon iso whatever but icebox is the one that's uh, a head scratcher that's gonna be a big tone setter and i wanted blint to go to a map well this is not their map choice but i wanted them to go to a map that they could uh set the tone with and this is winthrop's choice and if you remember the last time blint was on icebox they lost 13 to 3 against dark zero very very rough playing around some sova harbor while it's on icebox for winthrop Trump, they played some Nasi on Clove, uh, which was really cool. So I'm wondering how that those styles are going to clash. I think that's exactly it. Because of the blind loss that they suffered against Dark Zero last week, this is something that Winthrop wants to take probably take advantage of. And this is one of those maps where you could actually bring a Reyna, which have done so in the past, or also an yes. ISO, which could be very good, which have done also last week, of course, Reyna. And then the second map, though, going to Haven, when Jen mentioned yes, they, they lost last week for Blend Esports uh, against Dark Zero. The map that they did win against Dark Zero, though, was on Haven, where they pulled out an amazing like Chamber, Neon, and Breach, and I think that's going to be super cool to study and watch going into the second map. And when you know when you know your your enemy, when you know it's going to be that collegiate matchup, things get even more exciting. You are trying to win no matter what, and guess what? We have a close <laughs> on both of the teams for the Zippo agents. Select Blin and Winthrop. They're fighting, bringing new ideas, and I love to see this. I'm going to let you guys take it away yeah let's simmer on this one real quick vans because i mentioned the clove came out of winthrop last week already but the clove from plin i feel like we haven't seen on this yeah just becomes a mirror match at this point and unfortunately dan dryad is going to be sad there's no reyna going into the head-to-head -head here for the <laughs> duelist for okeanos and the infiltrator but uh, to, to go back into the more serious topic as to you yeah we haven't seen blin pull this out i think it just makes sense uh, again because you're trying to play this double controller in your team it worked out against m80 and then you Figured out okay well our, our retake capabilities maybe wasn't the best here against dark zero esports there's probably other ways for us to really try to smother our opponents in with the smokes that's available for us when we go for these retakes and that clove having refreshable smokes when it's not a cat or double cascade and a long wait after a high tight goes down i think this gives you a perfect opportunity to be a little bit more uh, aggressive and have some shorter bursts of timings when you're trying to play uh these type of attacks here and and retakes for both of these teams so this is going to pan out quite nice, uh, especially now being a mirror match and something that Winthrop University has uh, pulled out even last week. This is just a, a regular wheelhouse for them, right? They, they play that comp, so they don't know how to play against it. So this is actually even a great way for Winthrop University to still win on their map pick despite the agent comp change that comes out from Blint. Well, the favorites are Blin, but who are your favorites in the chat? Let us know who you're cheering on. Valorant! Valerie, we're cheering for good Valerie, but <laughs> Winthrop knew they had to change something uh, after the last time. They, 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 they're sick of that Van Silly hate, so <laughs> excited to see how that works. You already have the clove smokes in place, so Winthrop are going to try and drone past it, but this is going to put pressure on B. Yeah, and while they do the pressure on B, they're also adding the pressure on the A side for Blin Esports and score the first blood. So solo push on that end with slight support. So now you have to play the retake on the other end. So I like this push and pull and the fast pivot from Winthrop University to get the flat now. But Teague, all he's trying to do right now is try to delay with the cloak. Yeah, first blood and Winthrop kind of suffered a lot. And wait, Screwface kind of made it close at the end, but it will be a quick diffuse for Blin where Winthrop just take it one second at a time and then they started getting shot in the back from someone that came through A. Like, even 
have a second to get your bearings in this first round. That was the important thing, right? Like, while you have the, the Viper on this B side getting pressured, which is Spaz, he's actually putting up the wall. And what Teague is trying to do inside this B side is just to make sure that Winthrop University cannot go past beyond the, the attacking Viper wall uh, uh, from Silence that, that they were placing out on that end. So when you don't have control of Orange, you don't have to control uh, in the back of the B side, it gives a better opportunity for the Flood retake to happen. And it was very, very quick just because of the aggression here that Okeanos did at the beginning of the round. So this allows them to get an outlaw in round number two, have a, a solid anchor after waiting a couple of seconds. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Spaz is going to rotate out here to help the rest of the team. Now we'll just blend playing at the back or being tapped Winthrop. And with SMGs are, are happy brawling up close and personal, just cutting all noise and trying to close the gap as much as possible. This drone is going to meet its opposition, and now you're seeing numbers if you're Blin coming into A, and this is going to force Teague and Muncie to wait for reinforcements. They're on the way, and Winthrop... Well, the jig is up, and it's first blood for Nasi. Teague down. Winthrop... Now they, there's some snake bites, there's some stuff in the way, it's an obstacle course, and now that Blin, Blin's defense is back and set up and ready to party, Winthrop just didn't stand a chance. Two great jobs from, uh, two great rounds rather from Blin Esports at the very beginning here, the Buccaneers doing great, uh, using great utility rather to delay their opponents is what I'm trying to get to you because this was actually a forced buy that came out from Winthrop University after the plant. So when those owl drones that you mentioned saw each other here on the top of the pipes, they realized that there was actually a stinger buy coming out from Winthrop. So what did they do for Blend? They just pulled back. They used a util. You, you, heard, you talked about the snake bites that prevented the plants from coming through towards that site and just allowed once again all the players to be ready as soon as the util is gone to just flood back within the sites with better weaponry. So unfortunately there, a forced buy for Winter University that doesn't pay out in their favor and actually they got barely any kills out of it I think like one so you're definitely seeing a broken buy in this third round which should have been their gun run against the bonus and Blin they, they're going to be able to snowball a little bit more of that economy it's interesting that Jerk sets up his turret over on the A side instead of maybe more in the spawn area if you wanted to catch someone rotating through mid. So already some adjustments after seeing how far pushed up Blin were on pistol and how they got that first blood. And now that Winthrop went through their usual default of droning through B, they're going to pivot back to A and Blin are nowhere to be found. They may just try to... I thought they were going to want to flank through mid, but they could be worried about KJ Util. And with that first blood from Blin, Winthrop will get a quick plant down and see if they can hold all that real estate. They got, they got smokes in place, but as they had their eyes up, Mike, Mikey just took them out. And the rest of Util is not going to be good enough here. They're trying to play within the side. There's only a sheriff in the classic left. Should be an easy defuse coming through, especially with that type of protocols coming back for the retake. And that's the third time that, that Blin plays a retake within the sites. And you've mentioned it. Long. You thought that maybe we were going to have like a four player push for a flank, but they were just trying to make sure that mid is covered and B is covered. And there's no late shenanigans when they left the A site open. So you're making sure that there's no pressure on either ends and your retake is going to be, okay, well, we know exactly they're going to be planning towards the A site. We know that after killing Jerk, we Winther will have to play within the site because they're afraid of these flankers. And then you just play head to head in the back of the site from coming back from screens and winning all those um, those duels in the end. Uh, and we talked about that snowball economy, allowing Okeanos now to pick up an operator in round number four. And already going to try to move it out towards the A ramp, potentially. Is it belt? No, it's towards the nest. Look at Blin just four stacking at A win drop. Oh, down. they get first flooded again. But this looks more even. But Okeanos is a pillar on this high ground. All the action is below him, though. When win drop, this could be finally a round where they have the numbers in their favor. They've been getting crushed oh, on these my. retakes. But Okeanos is simply unstoppable with this, with this up. And you invest in him for a reason. Now the shadows are shooting at him and the shock bolt forces him forward. And Screwface is just playing with his food. Spaz has to hurry up though. Okay. Oh, Keanos. Knows he has to go close, but against the vandal of Screwface, it is traded, bought time for Spaz. Now he's in a 1v1 at 40 HP against Jerk. He's got a vandal too. 
Jorik still has the point though, so that's the disadvantage he's working with, but just had the better angle at the end to give Winthrop's first round win. I have no idea how <laughs> Infiltrator, sorry, Old Giannis was able to stay alive for so long there at that A nest. And it started off so well for Blaine Esports. Winthrop University had no idea that there was actually not two, but three players pushing up towards the A nest, setting up these crossfires and making sure that Okeanos could have free reign to opt here towards that right side of A site. But unfortunately, they lost their players on that left side, which allow Winthrop to really try to close in and narrow down that two versus one against Okeanos, trying to take it down with Util. You can definitely see the amount of respect that Winthrop University has given to Okeanos so far with this operator wielded, but they managed to salvage this op this time around. Infiltrator is going to try to use it towards middle, and while the op still purchased this time around for Okeanos is watching it, this A side, so they are going to miss each other at the beginning of the round, and the focus seems to be towards B, where you're just playing this cycle delay here for Blin. And originally, Infiltrator's using the AWP just to watch mid, and now Jerk has put that ahead. turret more towards the spawn, so more a general look back. Winthrop now depend on Infiltrator to round this yellow box. The snake fight is so well placed, and Infiltrator peaked, and Spaz was ready, delivers a double kill to Blin, and Winthrop stopped in their tracks, but can they keep walking Find this down, yellow B. box? Very much belongs to Blin, and the more Winthrop keeps staggering one by one, the more kills Blin are just gonna farm. Yeah, with the spike being open like that, I think with 43 seconds left on a five versus two, you're definitely just gonna try to save your weapon unless you have some crazy Hunter's Fury you're gonna try to pull out and you get lucky and ping those two players, but you definitely see the last two players pulling back and trying to save their weapons. Left. and. It's so cool to see the evolution of Icebox now in the defense where back in the Chamber Meadow, when Chamber was so good, uh, you had to have like a KO to play against him to just knife out towards yellow and then you just fight towards the area. But it's always like a, I'm going to run away and play the retake. And this time around, I mean, nice shot there from Okeanos, an easy one. It's going to be hard for Screwface to save his. And there you go. It's not going to happen. Uh, but, but just to end the point here, it's nice to see that on the defensive side, players are actually not afraid to continue to fight towards yellow because you don't have a KO knife to actually ping out how many players are really moving towards there and a recon dart is usually what's going to clear out towards yellow. If, that's get sh if that gets shot right away, you still don't know on the attack side how many players are actually anchoring towards that site. And that spot has been so good for so many defensive players from different teams. I think this is a good time for a Winthrop timeout to just discuss these post plants. Well, uh, I guess now planting is becoming more of an issue, at least on the left side of the map. And kind of how can Infiltrator be enabled uh, in the best way possible? Because he was, I think, the first one to fall going up against Spaz on that yellow box. And once you lose your jet, that's kind of the, the most mobile person on your team. And I know it's like Clove can kind of cosplay as like a duelist to, to take up that role as well but the jet is so important on icebox to, to quickly close the gap and i think spaz did such a good job on the defense to deny such a good power position and winthrop have to think about how they want to better address it do they be more aggressive do they try to double swing instead of just put too much dependence on infiltrator so we'll see what kind of changes come out of winthrop yeah unfortunately it might not be this round they don't have enough economy to work with and the best they got is a Hunter's Fury. I think things might start snowballing a little bit more in the favor of Winthrop University going to the next round. We could start going for orb objectives and try to activate other ults uh, along the side of weapons and this Hunter's Fury. Uh, and, but they are looking for some sort of mid control at the beginning, but so is Blind Esports. Three players already moving up. Early Aljona clear towards the mid. And I, I, immediately that, that stalls that split that they're trying to do here to take kitchen control. I like that Blin are testing the waters in mid two, just seeing what they can get away with. Cause I, after the few flawless rounds that Blin have had, I think they can take risks to really try and stress out the back line of Winthrop. But yeah. because of the smokes in mid, Blint won't advance any further, but rather just get eyes and ears on as many parts of the map as possible. Speaking of that, Winthrop with pistols and a marshal, gonna dash into yellow. Spaz won't be there this time. Fight because they down, have rifles, feet. they could just respect that distance and win well, the battle battle from there it is first blood yet again for blin most of these rounds have had first bloods in favor of blin now they just have to wait and see what winthrop are gonna do you can just delay they got a state fight you won't be able to plant yet they might start pushing forward and fighting yeah, this is just going to stall everything. They, they, but there's also the second time that Blind Esports has been pushing down middle when with the University have been on a full eco or some sort of a, just a marshal and everything else. 
but you could definitely see it here. It's it's looking like Blin will have full control in the end, Taiko. Blin just look a little too comfortable. And how do Winthrop really test those waters? Okeanos now pops the ult. And is carving his initials into everyone on Winthrop. Yet another flawless round for Blin. I was expecting this match to to be closer, but this uh, this is a little tough. It's a little tough when it's Winthrop University's map choice for sure. But yeah. <laughs> as just mentioned, this, this is now an opportunity here to start snowballing a little bit more. You have the economy. It's definitely going to get difficult anyways when you try to go for a force buy in the second round and you've lost. So you have to play a, a huge comeback here in the first couple of rounds. And you almost have to be meticulous in order to try to make the game close. But you're definitely seeing here Blaine Esports having a, a great defensive half so far. But this is that pivotal round. This is going to be that most important round that Winthrop needs in order to start bringing this comeback and they have um you know the the lockdown to work with so they could take over this a site you should run winthrop we need to tilt the scales they're gonna use the lockdown to just flush out everybody remember winthrop's issues on a wasn't really getting in but keeping the site afterwards and look Teague eventually made his way through mid, not worried about the KJ util, but Blim, they were looking mad interested in mid. And now that they got the flank going, Winthrop have to watch their back. This has got the attention of Screwface, who doesn't want to use his ult quite yet. Retaliation, though, it's a lockdown from the no defenders. I'm going to use it to break the Hunter's Fury, but you see this fight happening towards this A site. Now you can just start sticking to Spike. Just get halfway. Winthrop deal with the switch. People swinging outside or past the wall. So oh, great job from Nasty with that heal. Could have uh, kept going, but man, the mechanics out of Blin, especially someone like Spaz, he's been holding it down when he's on the field. And that's unfortunately just the first mistake, though, that came out from Winthrop University. They had a great plan to start things off towards this A-side execute to at least use the Hunter Sphere for Pulse Blight and not having to use it for delaying the, um, the the lockdown because the idea was trying to get Jerk behind to try to get a late flank. But he went out a little bit too early in front of his util, dies, and then the turret's down, and now you have to worry about the flank, which wastes a lot of time and dwindled down numbers here towards the A-side. And as you mentioned, it allows players like Spaz just come in and swarm up and just kill everybody and, and avenge his teammates to make sure that he gets the defuse and... Now this six to one scoreline lead in front of Blinn. And as I mentioned, it was a super important round for Winthrop to, to, to try to win with. And at least they'll try to have a second chance now that they have more economy around the Blade Storm and also a Viper's Pit that they could try to just pit in and try to get a plant there. Oh, an infiltrator has been pinged as well with his ult. Blinn are gonna play as safe as they can. Maybe wait out these smokes. But it's a Hunter's Fury from Muncy to just try and prevent the plan. Winthrop are gonna Spike stick Blin. it and hope to stop Blin from getting back into the site. Infiltrator is floating above screens, just trying to catch the, the Blin retake off guard. And Infiltrator doesn't get anything. Well, really, he's not getting support. He's solo holding screens. Winthrop are trying to watch their flank and just play inside of the Viper's pit. But watching the flank is Jerk. Oh, oh, no. So Winthrop need to look forward, but the Viper has been deleted. Winthrop Winthrop just have to live on so the spike can give him the round win. But Blin are already on the defuse, getting it halfway, and Winthrop has to get on this. But they're just getting kicked in. That is so unfortunate. Unlucky even for Winthrop University that through the sprays of two players shooting with the vandal inside the pit, it had to be silenced that it gets that gets picked off and the pit comes down. And everybody is trying to stay alive here towards the area, towards the front side gets fully denied and, and they, they are sorry caught out in the open which then allows here Blin to just retake the the site as they did but if anything it's just some great fights coming out from Teague get, getting some great uh impact frags for that round to make sure that he could leverage this this ult that you have from Clove and that they could just res whenever they want while getting information and also pushing forward kind of like a Phoenix ult to try to make sure that you guarantee some trades and you saw that super late lurk coming out from Spaz as well. He stayed so patient throughout the whole retake of Blin Esports to allow for him to win that 1v1 against Jerk. So Winthrop University are realizing a lot of a lot of gaps here in, in their strategies and their approach towards this map on the attack side. It's one, trying to get executions towards the B site, not working out. Pulse plants on A site, not working out. Consistently losing your battles against the flank on the A site, not working out. <laughs> so now at this point, you're trying to figure out what can you really do. 
and it's probably just to try to keep it as simple as possible or and just maybe maybe play more for it within the sites and not having your players just push all the way back towards spawn every single time to, to look back so aggressively towards garage uh but they are trying something different it seems as though there's there might be a little bit more mid control i don't know if infiltrate is going to try to updraft into uh top of pipes but there is definitely a a different strat here after this timeout to try to leverage middle Ooh, infiltrator does just that dashes above tube and blin have already been testing out mid control and they got a pick on the flank and that was teague so i think winthrop changing this up has given blin a, a second to just put some smokes up and see if they can deal with infiltrator with Blin getting another first blood, now it's been traded. It's just them feeling like they're in full control of not only, well, this part of the map, but the series as well. Winthrop, with the economy not looking amazing, they already tried something new, and it's not like it rewarded them. Mm -hmm. I mean, left, left, right, middle, center, anything right now is Winthrop. They're just trying to find any type of gaps and openings they can try to take advantage of. And as they realize here is like, hey, we haven't really tried middle. How do they play boiler? How to play kitchen? Let's try that out. And they haven't even crossed that line to, to try to get a plan, uh, to try to get control. But at least they got a plan towards the A site and they have players pushing forward. Now Infiltrator, instead of looking at screens, is going to watch the flank and jerk. Try and support him in the corner because, you know, Blin are going to flood in. And what a shot from Okeanos. Like, he's just on fire. He wins every duel. And Winthrop are already weakened. It's up to Screwface and Infiltrator. The walls come up for Spaz, making... It's causing so much panic in the Winthrop camp. There's so much aggression and Blin are too good. It looks so good when I said, okay, they're playing more for it. They have a timing. They cleared up towards the site. But the positioning run after that is that yeah. they left Jerk towards screen alone. If he dies, where's the trade? It won't happen because Inf uh, Infiltrator is playing on top of 410. And then he died. Where's the trade? Screwface can't trade him out because he's deep into pocket on the right side. So now in your post plan position, it's trying to go for at least some sort of protocol so that you could actually guarantee at least one trade. It, you lost every single one of your duels there uh, with no capabilities of of putting the situation back in your favor for Winthrop. And I, I hope, I mean, they don't have another timeout to work with right now, so you're definitely going to need to to get to that point that we mentioned at the beginning of the series. Now you have to start thinking on the fly. How can you adjust? And you need to start that leadership to talk about those protocols that needs to be a little bit more clean for these trades. And this is a new comp for Blinn. The last time they were on this, it was with a harbor. Now changing things up, it's Winthrop. That maybe have to be the ones who go back to the drawing board or go back to spawn. Okeanos is just the GOAT. We are talking about comparing him to Infiltrator as the ones that have to be the stars of the show. But there's really only one guy shining right now and it's Okeanos. The 3K with the op and another round and Blin who hold the wall and deny entry of Winthrop into B with yet another flawless round. And Nasi was the last one standing as a clove when they have their ult. And that was a surprising one too. I feel that if your your jet's gonna try to dash forward again, anchoring towards yellow has been a pain point that Winthrop University has not been able to take down against Blin. But when you have that ult, when you have weapons and you have a dash that can follow with it, uh, I think there, there was a better opportunity here or a bigger opportunity for Nasi to really try to move in and try to get a trade and for the rest to follow back with them and not just wait for the poison order to come down because what happens when that comes down? Teague's already there to po post up another smoke. So you, they need to be a little bit more aggressive against these timings. Yeah, the denial of vision from Blin has been so good and Winthrop have the options. Like you said, you got drone, you got shock bolts. He's just supposed to clear these tiny areas, and you also need to win your 1v1s when your jet dashes in, and Okeanos has had the last laugh in every 1v1. Now the smoke comes up, and the showdown will continue in another episode here in mid. It's Winthrop, if they could clear mid, it would give them the offensive option and maybe get behind Blin. But right now, Jerk is oh, having no. a hard time on this back line, and Infiltrator can't hold on any longer. You just know this is going to be the rest of the game right now for Blade Esports. The way that they're pushing through and fighting across that, they're running with so much confidence. They just realize that they're diffing Winthrop on macro and micro, so they're not afraid to do these plays. But at least making up for unfortunate situations like that, Winthrop, it was great. Double kill from Nasi. This evens up our number 3-3. Three, three. 
Winthrop have the plant, and they'll hear potentially that drop down from Blin. Over on yellow box, crossfire for Winthrop. Some smoke, silence. Oh, threats the needle. Nasi has to pull off a 4K to save this round. <laughs> Sometimes you just got it, and there's Last been these moments in the past as well where Nasi pulled up his big boy pants and said, let me just try to help out wherever I can, and then you get into a timeout and it's just eating oatmeal. You know, so you're you're <laughs> hoping right now with that 4K, that's going to add that little bit of momentum here that Winthrop University desperately needs in this game. Because remember, they're out of timeouts. Their macro game, their approach, their splits, their, their sight hits, nothing is working so far. And when it comes down to individual plays, at least it could count on Nasi, because uh, even when it comes down to trades, it's not there. Take flight. At least that was a more successful win, uh, Winthrop post plant. Yes, it was off the back of Nasi, but for him to just hold that angle and everyone who came towards him died is very impressive. But can Winthrop win as a team instead of just have someone, you know, absolutely peak in a round? Can we see consistency out of Winthrop? Can we see them swing momentum in any type of way? So the scales are very tilted in uh, Blin's way. We had a favor. good start at least, right? The, the Owl Drone pushed out the pit, so this gives a chance here for Winthrop to group up a little bit more because a lot of that strategy at the beginning was trying to push these players towards the A side where you're aggressive for Blin. So now Winthrop University has the element of surprise where they can start moving forward until that alarm bot just got broken, but they still the have area. space. They could take this B site now because of that. Infiltrator doesn't want to waste any time, just dashes in yellow box, actually at the same time as the recon bolt. Nowhere to so run. Winthrop have control of the site, but what is on the other side of this wall? It drops and Infiltrator has to react, but he got distracted by something on the high ground. Loses that to Mikey, locked down in place from Mikey, and Nasi is just a hero for Winthrop. 3k! And with the ult, we'll get a second try, Okeanos with the op, takes two L's for the price of one. And Winthrop will abandon B. Boom. All because of that. We saw in that radar the whole time. Teague was trying to hold up towards the A nest. And Jerk was trying to find that timing. They crossed each other. And Jerk just had heard the audio cues and said, okay, I have fully the A site. Come back towards the area. I can cut through rotate. Now Okeanos has to play a one versus three. He has the money. So he might as well see what she can pull off never mind <laughs> screw face Revealing area. ready for him and winthrop now back to back Switching rounds and five. off of nazi just fragging but it, it's not inspiring confidence uh, if you're a winthrop fan but how many times can nazi do that you know so far twice <laughs> so yeah. far two rounds how in a many row more <laughs> exactly I, I i'm with you though lemon kiwi i'm not fully convinced here for winthrop university yet it's really off the back of two players and a really nice timing from jerk to be able to salvage the last two rounds but that was also just blend being overly aggressive more confident and then maybe being a little bit more complacent in that in that uh in that process because of that of that confidence that he built up in the last few rounds but they still have a very strong cushion at the very beginning and they're also looking here uh to try to get fairly aggressive on middle with this dart that seems to be going up towards orange even the last rounds oh, went from, was using a the viper wall to sell b and end up a and the mind games aren't working for Winthrop, at least in that last half. You are seeing Blid heavy pushed up past uh, into two, going into kitchen. This will be up to Jerk, yeah. who's called for help in the past to to deal with flankers, because you never know where Blin are. There's just no eyes on kitchen. But I think Winthrop realizing this, Jerk gets a lucky headshot, uh, oh, headshot so onto Teague, nice. and no, Blin will not You're stop cool. this trek. They're gonna go to A. Yeah, and they already smoked out towards Boiler. And it's going to be a four versus two on a pulse plant for them when there's no util on the other end, unless the ghost land. The sinful trader just starts going crazy. Here. They'll be heading to the high ground. 27 HP, the first one to peak to try and enable silence. And right below them is Spaz as soon as they drop down. And he peaks against four this round. Uh, a huge round for, for Blin. I thought the, the plan was already over when they tried to come out of their close smoke and then got, got pinged by the recon dart. And I was like, oh crap, they know we're working middle. But 
Looks like Winthrop University didn't want to react more proactively, but more reactively. So you saw it from that minimap and through this replay, they smoked out towards Boiler on Timmy the turret so they could keep working on the kitchen with a recon dart. The protocols are working out for Bleeding Esports where they get the trade off towards the back of kitchen. It forces out players to rotate and Spaz, because of that smoke on Timmy, is able to hold bottom Boiler and catch everybody off rotates to get a 4k. That's a type of Standing macro ahead. that Winthrop weren't doing on this comp. There and it's are. crazy because this is a composition that Blend Esports picked against Winthrop that played it last week and they're played <laughs> better than them. Now an eco for Winthrop, not, not forcing anything like they did in the last half. And Winthrop could have got some wind in their sails if they won the pistol and tried to salvage a few rounds but now with blin taking both pistols and being up 10 to 3 winthrop have a lot of work ahead of them and on their knees for a miracle to say the least because blin are just playing so well today too well too well, well unfortunately awesome. at this point in winthrop they realize the economy's very very low and this is our last chance spaz just caught another timing and is going to hear the rotate this is going to be a free find for b again look at that Ooh. there's missed comms coming through from somewhere Johnson that forced silence down. to rotate over towards the a site it hurts some the ghosts and blin it's not even like they're planning right away because monty just went back for orb and they don't seem too worried about Winthrop's setup. They got smoked through Snowman and Winthrop are all flooding through the same side. They're not going through any kind of mid cut. We may see Screwface cage here against Spaz and Hurt. Oh, I saw the cape and Spaz gets the edge there. Blin, how many flawless rounds is it going to be? Like, it's absolutely diffing winthrop today yeah and, and uh, dude i just i just ra answer like i'm a rapper yeah but yeah ariana <laughs> grande over here oh that as well <laughs> i don't listen to enough ariana grande these days but i i could i could sense it now uh but no that said uh, yes how many flawless or one are they going to get but at the same time spaz has done a great job in the last two rounds to get so much value out of these lurks and these pushes so the the info that he gets in the anti-eco to allow for them to get a free plant onto the a side is one or sorry b side is one thing but the other thing is what that's like what uh, a 4k and a 3k that he's got in the last two rounds and already two away from a pit so thankfully there's a tech pause that happens right now um against these two teams where it may calm down this this momentum that that blin is has built from the very beginning so hopefully that's going to change things a little bit for winthrop at this point but we're getting updates as well uh, here, chat, that unfortunately here, uh, two players DC'd, so we're just waiting for them to come back. The good news is, though, at least, is that, uh, you know, we have we have great admins over at the Knights. We have great admins over in the VCTs in general, where usually during tech, tech pauses on the main stage, you can't really, uh, you're not allowed to talk to each other or, or, or type or anything like that. And the beauty about it is, uh, as well is that it's also contained here on, in an online environment because they have to keep their cams up. So there's definitely not going to be any conversations that's going to continue forward here with winter university but you definitely do see for blind esports that they mm -hmm. once again uh, are probably at the, at the verge of maybe winning this very easily again because of that pit that's almost ready after a plant that they could play inside here if they want to play against the rifles of uh, of winthrop yeah and our next map will be haven which is blind's choice um and we'll see if we'll get a kind of any neons and isos because both these teams have been experimenting experimenting with that but for this tech pause i don't think they a team like blind need to talk to each other one because uh 11 3 but second of all there's just a lot of pre-existing synergy like spaz and teague go way way back on a team called lenny time before blind they competed almost lenny a year time. together yeah i know right and mikey and silence are former teammates on btr fan club you know the you know the names go crazy and <laughs> in the bubble scene but there, there's actually a lot of synergy here on the blind side before they even rep started representing a collegiate team and monsi is the igl so i think with things going this well for for blind they're not really worried definitely not definitely not i think this is a, a great game plan that that came out here from uh bleeding esports so far and they, they've been dominant from the beginning to the end i don't want to sound like a broken record at this point but nothing <laughs> nothing is um nothing is is working in the, in the wrong way here for blind the the lurks are perfect too uh the pushes i mean they don't have to 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 be as 
good on the executes because they've been able to play with open sites and that's also thanks to the lurks coming out here from the viper uh, of spaz so there's there's definitely a lot here that that winter university has to think about now that they have a chance to try to come back into uh this game but if not i i think it's setting your sights here into the second map but this is also your map pick for winter university and you lose in this fashion or at least it's so far not not fully losing the map but you're definitely letting it slip uh, through the grass, through your fingers, uh, in your map picking. And that's not, not going to be looking too good uh, heading into that second map should this finish continuously in a, in a one-sided affair here for Bleed Esports. Yeah, and for Winthrop, for a lot of these players, this is their first, like, proper season of challengers. Like, a lot of them have been competing since about 2020 and going through qualifiers and even being substitutes on huge teams. Like, I'm thinking of Silings, who uh, temporarily subbed in for Nitro, I think, when he was uh, having a baby. So, Silings has had, like, played oh, with dude, some of the about best. That. Dude, you're taking me back. Yeah. I know. I, I got to go through the history books during this fill a little bit, but it's just like Silex <laughs> has played with some Valorant greats. Um, and to try and get back to that stardom is going to take a lot of work. Uh, on top of that, though, he he's I felt like he's already proven that. And I agree with you that when he had a chance also, man, maybe he's just a, a, a sub star as well. Not only subbing for Nitro, but subbing for Weedin uh, over in the past. But we'll hold that thought here. We're coming back from a timeout with heavy aggression. Coming out from Bleeding Esports, we'll, we'll continue our, our podcast on the history of silence <laughs> um, if, if there's going to be another tech pause. But I'm, I'm knocking on wood right now. Let's go back with the action. Yeah, I'm glad everyone is back and reconnected. It started with Infiltrator just doing the, a similar thing than last round of being more aggressive towards Tube. And look at this dance, this chess match between Infiltrator and Okeanos for mid control. And it is a stalemate. I think with the smokes coming back up, even just creating a distraction, creating some noise would give a chance for Blin to maybe get control of Yellow Box. They're doing so right now, but they don't have their jet. So Blin, how is this going to go with a man down? So far, so good. They're still playing aggressively with this plant that they have. They could use the pit if they want to, but it's Guardians, a Bulldog, and a Vandal and a Spectre. Maybe it's not going to be the best play that you want to use against the, the rifles that can have world. more players coming through, but they're still going to use it. So we'll see here. This is going to give space, at least for Winter University, to start activating the retake here towards this B site. I like this Viper's Pit, too, because yeah. Muncie can watch the left side. Spaz can play out of fire at the back of it. And the Winthrop train goes to the left, and oh, Muncie you. is playing inside of the pit. They pop out like little mole rats in Winthrop just didn't know where to look. Jerk still did a fantastic job with three, but he's got one more ahead of him and a defuse, but no time to do so. So Blin will go up to 12. Yeah, Jerk at least got some match point players deleted here from the server uh, as he had a 4K within the round. But e even then, that recon dart that was thrown out by Monsi, you, you just mentioned it before, after the pit that was dropped down by Spaz, Monsi throws that recon dart, it hits towards yellow, it pings out two players out of the four. Because of that gap that you had, That that's what I mean about the the playbook and the approach that you have. You understand what your weaknesses are by being able to play such a strong Viper's Pit on a Pulse Plant as a Viper, but you leave the yellow Stop side done. open. What's your countermeasure? It's the Recon Dart, the Plank coming in from T when they have that utility available from the Clove. This is so good. This is buying every single round now for Winter University, and it's only in due time at this point. The more they're going to be able to chip across the economy uh, of Winthrop University, the more you're going to be able to take down shit. You lose a couple of rounds here for Blind Esports. The economy is going to stay very low for Winthrop. And like I said, it's only right a matter of time. Rifle rounds for Blin. It's good. What an Uno reverse card to be dealt to lose 13 to 3 against Dark Zero and for Blin to. Oh, yeah. Give the taste of that medicine yeah. to Winthrop. <laughs> you just want to you just want to place the skip card. Go to the next map pretty much now for Winthrop. Wow, Okeanos. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing his stats after this. What an incredible start. And Spaz as well. Mike, get on that kill feed. Everybody, get a tag in. Winthrop, <laughs> going to try and play together on this swing. And Nasi gets that win. Blin have also planted over at B. And they have mid control, so this could be a dub. Yeah. <laughs> Very good analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's a good dub. It's a good dub for Blin. It's a four versus two. What can you really do, right? Nasi has ult, and you can't really do anything because they're the last player standing. So that's exactly it. It was only a matter of time at this point, and it 
was earlier than expected because they were spotless in the second half here for Blin spotless. Esports to be able to win this first map against Winthrop. Really was a spotless map one. But I, w I wasn't expecting it to be like that much of a gap. And then I know you guys tell me about the nine to three curse. And there's been some some hero rounds from Winthrop here and there with like Nasi going crazy and every now and then. But for, for Winthrop to pick this map and to look this, the, for the struggle bus to be chugging along this bad is yeah is scary i, I want a good series i want some valorant <laughs> if, if anything at least that uh you know you you come out with novelty on the second map here of haven for um the winners of blin esports so if you're coming out with novelty you might not be able to switch out too much going in from what you've shown from week one so there's a possibility here that winthrop might have studied something to hopefully bring this into a third map but unfortunately not the result that you wanted here on winthrop's side to lose that badly it could be opposite day maybe you you win your opponent's map but Happens i don't know uh, as well. <laughs> we got some cope we got some hope we got some valorant and we got a break so we'll see you after this Dude, I can't even tell you honestly. I don't. I can't. I. I, I couldn't even give you this, this answer. I'm gonna have to go like Sentinels, Loud, EG. Uh, from last season, I guess. I mean, recently it was Sentinels who won Masters. Uh, the year before, winning Champions was EG. And then before that, yeah, just Champions basically. And then it was Fnatic, Fnatic, correct? Oh my! Am I gonna have a brain fart here? Okay. Most recent one was EG. It goes EG. Is it loud? Fnatic or loud? Maybe loud, but I think it was Fnatic. And then I, I don't know. And then before that, it was Ascend. I think, I could be, I could be wrong. Got EG last year, then loud, then Ascend. I believe VCT winners twenty twenty one was Ascend, and then twenty twenty two was loud, and then twenty twenty three was EG or Evil Geniuses. The most winning teams chronological order. Bro, I'm, I'm going to be so bad at this. All right, so Sentinels, right? Surely? Or am I... Right, I, won't even, I won't even ask because they're going to be wrong. Sentinels, I know... Dude, I don't pay attention to one or is this. Sentinels, Ascend. I know Ascender in there. Optic won something. We always be talking about... I don't know what they won, but they won something. Uh, and then Fnatic won something, right? So something like that. So most recent one's EG. Then I'm pretty sure we have Loud. And we have Ascend. Pretty sure those are the only three. The VCT champions were 2021 Ascend, 2022 um, Loud, and 2023 EG, Evil Geniuses. Well, 2021 was Ascend, 2022 it was Loud, 2023 was EG. It was Ascend, uh, Loud, and then EG. 2021 champion team was Ascend, and then the 2022 champion team was Loud, and then 2023 was EG. First year, it wasn't Sentinels. I think it was Ascend, right? Ascend won the first year? Okay, okay. And then the second year? Dude, who won the second year? Was that 2023, right? Okay, so that was literally, that literally just happened. It was EG, EG won it. So 2023 was Evil Geniuses. 2022 was Loud. And then 2021 would have been Ascend, I think. Loud won, I know Sentinels won, and we're EG, EG, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, that, 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 that's definitely not the correct order. The champions winners in order would be Ascend with CNED and Bone Gold Kiles, and then it would be the next one would be 2022, would be Loud, the, the Saucy Pinkata Aspas Core. The next champs winners would be be EG and then we don't know who 2024 is. The game starts long before the game starts. And warm hands are faster hands. Gain the upper hand and power up your pregame warm up with Zippo hand warmers.
Peace.